Morning, folks. Welcome to uh, Wabash Catch TV's Big Talk with Bruce Dickey here on this very pleasant Tuesday morning. Hope you're having an outstanding day. Uh, my guest today is Dr. David Mills, and we're going to talk up more around that one today. Oh, there we go. <laughs> well, good morning, Little Egypt. Uh, glad to be with you. There you go. We're going to talk about all kinds of fun stuff today. Uh, we're going to talk about Jasper School. We're going to talk about Spelling Bee. We're going to talk about uh, Scouting. You're still in scouting, so, yep, aren't you? Yep, still active with it, yeah, very much so. so. I thought so, because we got a lot to talk about. Oh, and, and Ohio State. Ooh. You know, I was kind of hoping we would avoid <laughs> talking about Ohio State. We'll, we'll, we will talk a little bit about that here in uh, just a few minutes. But uh, you are watching Big Talk with Bruce Dickey right here on Wabash Catch TV. I'm Bruce Dickey. And, uh, and uh, what is going on in the community? All kinds of community events as well as sports that uh, you can watch on TV. Community events for today down in Fairfield. It's the Greater Fairfield Area Chamber of Commerce. They're inviting you to a ribbon cutting today for the Egyptian Behavioral Health Services. Egyptian Behavioral Health Services. That'll be today at 4 o'clock. Check that. Today at noon at the at their Fairfield location at 407 North Basin Road. Kind of a, a similar type of thing. It's an Alzheimer's Caregiver Support Group meeting tonight. That'll be in Centralia. That's at the Centralia Estates Retirement Village. And that's 1916 East McCord in Centralia. Uh, this support group is open to the public. I believe they meet once a month, and it'll be today from 2 to 3 o'clock, and uh, they're in Centralia. Also, uh, tonight over at the uh, Fairfield versus Wayne City boys basketball game, I believe that game is at Wayne City tonight, the, uh, the Wayne City senior class is going to be selling barbecue as well as pork chop sandwiches. It's a fundraiser to help send the senior class on their uh, trip to uh, Washington, D.C. Very nice. I think, uh, isn't that kind of a, uh, isn't that with the combination with the Podolskis or something like yes, that? Yes, uh, very much so. That's uh, part of the uh, Bernard uh, uh, Podolsky uh, uh, Charitable Trust. Uh, they're in the community and yeah. uh, great blessing for Wayne County. Yeah, really has been very nice uh, for the county, that's for sure. Also uh, today in Flora, piano with Mary Kenley. She'll be playing at Flora Rehab today at 10 a.m. just after this show airs. And again, uh, go down there, join them, say hello, and uh, have a chance to listen to some beautiful Beautiful tinkling on the ivories. What is uh, going on on television today? Uh, Wabash Catch TV here. Or give me, give you, let me give you what we're having on TV here tonight. We'll have uh, basketball. It's high school girls basketball. It is senior night. Wayne City is at North Clay tonight. So uh, the girls ball, ball game going tonight. JV starts at six fifteen with the varsity fault to follow, and that'll be on channel three, of course, channel twenty five or channel. 100 here in uh, this area. Also tonight, plenty of other basketball going on as uh, in the uh, colleges. It's uh, NCAA basketball. They've got uh, Fox Sports 1 tonight at Channel 610, and that's Northwestern at number 13, Maryland. That's at 6 o'clock tonight, even though uh, Maryland, uh, they're still number 13, even though the Illini jumped up to, to beat them the other day. Can you believe that? I unfortunately don't want follow a lot of college basketball. Don't worry um, about it. it. It's okay. I'm sorry. Hey, don't uh, worry about it. You know, you've got other things going on. Uh, you know, I, I, I can I can nail things down college football wise with you and, and, and keep up, but uh, college basketball, uh, I just I, I I don't follow it a whole bunch. I know there's a lot of Illini fans around here. Uh, Lorna Diesel at my school likes to remind me of that quite I bet often. That. Yeah, so she uh, goes all the time. She does. Yeah, she goes. Uh, but uh, that's at six. That's at six o'clock tonight on Fox Sports. One also a uh, number three Virginia will be at NC State. They're number twenty one. That's at six o'clock. ESPN two has a triple header tonight, starting with that Virginia at NC State game at six. Channel six thirty eight ESPN two. That'll be followed by uh, your favorite school, Ohio State, is at Michigan, and you already admitted that you don't follow it and don't care. Well, I won't say that I don't care. I'm a uh, a fair weather fan of all sports at the Ohio State. State Ohio University. State. Oh, he said the Ohio State <laughs> University. Want to make sure exactly. Yeah, and uh, you know, I'd hate to, I'd hate to see Michigan get a 
get a W over the. Since the you bring it up, <laughs> since you bring it up, and I guess I'll, I'll ask you now. Maybe you can mention mm-hmm. now or or mention it later. What is the other? What were the other opportunities to be? Ohio State University, if that one is the Ohio State University, was Ohio University in Athens potentially considered as the Ohio State University? I think that the reason that it is that way, in all honesty, I think goes back to the same reason that it is the Pennsylvania State University, and I believe the University of Illinois. Those are the land grant institutions of the state, uh, and that's, it's not, that's their it's charter. Not, it's not an affectation. No, mm-hmm. that is part of the official name. Really? Yes, it is. See mm-hmm. now that I did, I didn't even realize that about yep. the University of Illinois. Mm-hmm. Oh wow! Yep, Learned that is something. Uh, new. I, I like I said, I believe that goes back to uh, being a land grant institution and. There's some notoriety that goes along. Oh with it. no, he's not. That's the <laughs> affectation part of it. I got it. I got it. Uh, but anyway, Ohio State's at Michigan tonight. That's on ESPN two channel six thirty eight. That'll be followed by UNLV hosting Nevada. Nevada's number seven in the country. As uh, they have, that'll be at ten o'clock. So triple header tonight on ESPN two. Follow uh, if you want to go to regular ESPN. They've got a double header. Kansas at Texas and Kentucky at Vanderbilt. All that starts at six o'clock. Kentucky game will start at 8. Georgia is at Arkansas on ESPNU. That's channel 642. Doubleheader there as well as Pittsburgh will play Clemson following that game at 8 o'clock. And uh, then on Big Ten Network, it's uh, Wisconsin at Nebraska. So a big night in the Big Ten. I think uh, four games going on. And uh, that'll be at 7 o'clock on uh, Big Ten Network channel 600. And finally CBS Sports Network channel 628. St. Joe's is at Dayton tonight, and that ought to be a dandy. You want the pro basketball instead? You're looking at the New Orleans Pelicans at the Houston Rockets at 7 o'clock. That's on TNT. Doubleheader on TNT as well. That's channel 633. And the second game is the Philadelphia 76ers at the L.A. Lakers. And uh, one hockey game to tell you about as uh, going into uh, tonight, it's the Philadelphia Flyers, the, uh, the All-Star break ending. Philadelphia Flyers at the New York Rangers at 6.30 tonight. That's on NBC Sports Channel. That'll be Channel 216. My guest today is Dr. David Mills, and we are going to talk about all kinds of wild things when we return. You are watching Big Talk with Bruce Dickey right here on Wabash Catch TV. Back right after these. Welcome to Clay County Hospital. Clay County Hospital and Clinics offer the best in services and care in the area with a staff that strives to provide the very best in patient-centered care. We offer full hospital services including radiology, therapy, surgery, labs, and emergency services. Our clinics located in Flora, Louisville, and Clay City allow us to reach out to Clay County residents so that you never have to go far from home for your health care needs. In addition to our regular provider staff, we also offer affiliated specialty provider services at our Flora Clinic. Finally, have a minor injury or illness, but don't want to wait for an appointment? Our walk-in, no appointment clinic hours in Flora are Monday through Thursday, 11 a.m. until 8 p.m. and Saturday from 8 a.m. until noon. Make Clay County Hospital your number one choice for health care, convenient and close to home. Clay County Hospital, your number one choice in health care. Get what you want and nothing else when you order a la carte internet from Wabash Communications. Wabash Communications is now able to offer a la carte internet called broadband only with fast download and upload speeds, reliable service, and unlimited data usage. No phone service is required for our broadband only plans. Our broadband only menu includes packages up to one gig download. Call us at 665-3311 now to order. Service availability and internet speed will depend on location. Contact us for details. When you want an honest deal and hometown service without the runaround, go to Lamont Chevrolet Chrysler in Fairfield. Let Gabe McGahey, Sheldon Bunning, Jeff Black, Dennis Downs, Matthew Rogers, or Caleb Dunn score the best deal for you on your next new or pre-owned vehicle. Parts and service departments with factory trained technicians and express lane and state-of-the-art tire and alignment technology. Lamont's always inspects your battery, antifreeze, wipers, and tires for free. We want you prepared for the open road ahead. Open 24-7 at LeMondsOnline.com. You'll like the way we do business. Aha! 
Hi, my name is Bruce Dickey of Wabash Catch TV's Big Talk with Bruce Dickey. Watch us each weekday right here on your local cable station. We're on at 9 a.m. with a repeat at 9 p.m. It's your local TV talk show with plenty of information, fun, and frivolity to get your start day started right or maybe even ended right. Please contact me at 665-9970 or at Bruce D at Wabash.net if you are a member of your organization would like to be a guest on the show at 665-9970 big talk with bruce dickey hey thanks for watching your call is very important to us please hold your call will be answered in the order it was received tired of paying a big faceless company for your local telephone service in flora now you can easily switch your 662 telephone number to wabash communications in flora that's right wabash can now provide local phone service to the flora area and yes you can keep your 662 telephone number it's available to both business and residential customers call us today at 662-3636 wabash your local telecommunications provider when you build with morton buildings you build something that lasts and now you can build for less during Building Value Days. If you're dreaming of a personal storage building, horse barn, farm storage, home, office, insulated workshop, or even a commercial facility, take advantage of our discounted pricing on new buildings now through February 28, 2019. So don't delay. Visit MortonBuildings.com for more information. Morning, folks. Welcome back to uh, Big Talk with Bruce Dickey. My name is Bruce Dickey. Thank you so much for joining today here on Wabash Catch TV. My guest is Dr. David Mills. He is the superintendent of uh, Jasper Grade School. Superintendent, treasurer, what is the exact title? I'm trying to... Uh, well... Uh, chief bottle washer. I know <laughs> Tom does a lot of that. A L- little bit of everything uh, in a K-8 elementary district like that. Uh, especially down here in Southern Illinois, you are a combination principal superintendent. Uh, I also do uh, some uh, substitute bus driver work. Um, I I would say that the the kind of administrator that I am and some other people that are in those dual roles, it's it's, uh, almost uh, from a a bygone era. You know, when you had the the principal is the person that was also the superintendent and set the budget. They usually taught a class. They coached. They drove the bus. They butchered the meat. They fixed the furnace. You know, you, you just you, you do everything in a small school like that. So uh, it's kind of got it, it, you know that you 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 bring that up. It's kind of going back to that, isn't it? From with with the funding issues in the state. Um, in some places, uh, it, it it's doing that. Uh, when I look at. Uh, with the state right now, uh, they've redone the way that uh, that they calculate uh, general state aid. And, well, I tell you uh, what, let's do. Do you want to we'll wait get into that later? Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> I don't want to scare people off in the first two minutes of the show. <laughs> we may get into that later. We may not get let, into let that. Let me later. get my chalkboard out. <laughs> get, the, get the whiteboard out. Yep. That's exciting. Let's tell everybody who you are. You're from uh, this area. I am. Uh, I am a 1990 graduate of uh, Flora High School. Uh, my family moved here in the latter part of the 70s as part of the big oil boom that was out here. My dad uh, worked for uh, a small, little-known independent uh, oil field service company called mm-hmm. Halliburton. Uh, oh, yeah, little, yeah. Little, yeah, little place. Uh, the, the tongue-in-cheek part of that, I would tell people in college that my dad worked for Halliburton, and uh, people would invariably go, do you know you know, Dick Cheney? And, uh, and sometimes I'd give him a rise and oh yeah you know we invite the dickster over all the time for <laughs> randy and cigars i mean we're just we're, we're bring like Lynn, that bring Lynn, bring the kids <laughs> so no i don't know uh dick cheney but uh no uh was here uh, pretty much elementary uh up through high school did your dad ever get to meet him i'm gonna ask it ah uh, no my, I don't think my dad ever met uh, Dick Cheney, but uh, interesting story. Uh, the gentleman that was the president before Dick Cheney was there of Halliburton, and I, I don't want to struggle on his name, uh, but uh, he uh, was actually trained by my grandfather. Really? Yes. Uh, it used to be, you know, the way Halliburton uh, you know, executives work. 
it didn't matter if you were coming in as a geophysicist, as a as a as a truck driver, or or, or whatever in Halliburton. Everybody spent a certain amount of time out in the field. Oh, is that right? And uh, when uh, the, the the guy that was there before Cheney was there, my grandfather actually trained him uh, on like a four week rotation. Uh, no kidding. They're in uh, Southern Ohio. Yeah. So my dad knew uh, knew, uh, knew knew the previous president. Uh, I'll be doggone. On a on a one on one basis. Yeah. That's really cool. All right. So you're in, you're in Florida. You move here in the, in the seventies. Go to school here. Mm-hmm. And then where would you go to school, college after that? Uh, I went up to uh, Lakeland College uh, up at Mattoon, and at that time was uh, really pressing hard to, to get into uh, law enforcement, so that's what I studied there. And then went on down to SIU Carbondale and uh, worked for the campus police department down there as a Saluki patrolman and was in the marching band and the pep band and pursued a degree in uh, political science, uh, specializing in uh, public administration. Did they still wear fedoras as part of their yes, uniform back then? we did. We sure did. Did and had the zoot suits yeah. and uh, the Saluki strut, which they yeah. you know yeah. featured there on the Simpsons a while yeah. back. So that was pretty awesome. Uh, at that time, my family had moved out to Virginia. I went out there and uh, worked for a police department out there in Virginia for a brief period. And uh, you're getting right to where I was wanting to go yeah. next. What got you into education? It, I had always kind of wrestled back and forth a little bit with I, I knew I was going to be a public servant I think it goes back to a lot of the scouting stuff I'd been involved with and uh, there was part of me that I wanted to really push the law enforcement thing for a while but in the back of my head I had the idea of being an educator and uh, out there in Virginia just you know long story short you know uh, and it was a good ex- it was all, all in all it was a pretty good experience I was around some pretty good people I just decided I could make a bigger difference in the world uh, unshackling a child's mind than shackling, shackling an adult's wrists and made decision uh, to go back so I went back down to Carbondale finished up my teaching certificate and lo and behold the first job that I got uh, full time was in Pontiac, Illinois as a vocational law enforcement teacher no kidding yeah at uh, Pontiac Township High School mm-hmm what is that even? What is what is that subject? I guess I'm, well, I guess I'm confused. What the, the, well Pontiac has has the jail has the prison has the big there prison there. So they needed they needed someone to teach that particular well, subject to uh, to feed into. What had happened is is there was kind of a, a renaissance in vocational education going at that time that they wanted to expand the programs out beyond just agricultural and yeah. and, and metals and building trades. They they wanted to get in some other things. So the Livingston Area Vocational Center up there, uh, they had added a graphic arts program and uh, they'd had uh, their uh, health occupations program and they surveyed the kids and there are a lot of kids who are interested in going into criminal justice. So they talked with the state and the state approved a program for vocational law enforcement instruction. And what they needed was someone that had 2,000 hours of law enforcement experience, bachelor's degree, preferably academy experience. So I put in and You were up, probably about the only person I, in the world. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> And lo and behold, this is what was so interesting. When we lived here in Florida, our next door neighbor was Mick Peterson, Uh who was the head football coach up there at Pontiac. And uh, so, you know, connections make the world go round. You know, it helped having him up there, but I ended up being able to coach with him for, you know, the years I was up there at Pontiac. That's kind of where I cut my teeth to do that. That's a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But uh, I guess it gets back to the the thing you got into uh, teaching. To help kids, which is kind of mm-hmm. what you wanted to do all along. Give me that. Give me that line again. You'd rather unshackle. Oh, I'd, I'd kids rather. I'd, I'd rather unshackle a kid's mind than shackle an adult's wrists any day. I, I, I think, love that. I just think you, you came paid, up with that, did you? I, I did. That's a good. One. <laughs> do you, you have a few of those, don't you? Oh, I got a haversack. <laughs> I don't know if we got enough time. Well, we might. I, I tell you what, we might get to the uh, to a few of the uh, of the Doctor David Mills. What we, what do you call them? Mills isms. Well, I w- yeah, I would say Mills isms. You, you also got to remember who my junior high school basketball coach was. Who was that? Larry McGrew. So, oh, yeah. You know, it, he's been a guest on the show a time you, or two. You got to have some stories. You got to have some sayings. So <laughs> if you're going to keep up at that table, that's uh, you ain't a kid. You ain't a kid. And, well, folks, you're watching uh, Big Talk with Bruce Dickey right here on Wabash Catch TV. I'm Bruce. This is Dr. David Mills from Flora, from Fairfield, from Clay City, from all over, from Virginia. Well and, traveled. <laughs> and uh, we'll be back talking with him a little bit more about all kinds of different things uh, again. On here, big talk with Bruce Dickey on Wabash Catch TV. Back right after these. When you build with Morton Buildings, you build something that lasts. And now you can build for less during Building Value Days. 
If you're dreaming of a personal storage building, horse barn, farm storage, home, office, insulated workshop, or even a commercial facility, take advantage of our discounted pricing on new buildings now through February 28, 2019. So don't delay. Visit MortonBuildings.com for more information. It's my choice. It's my choice. It's my choice. So many of our county residents have treatment or surgeries done at larger hospitals. What they don't always realize is that they have a choice. A choice to select where they can have physical therapy or any number of post-operative treatments and follow-ups. Clay County Hospital is your choice. Talk with your specialist, surgeon, or primary care provider and let them know that you want to stay close. Close to family, friends, and most importantly, home. Clay County Hospital, your number one choice in healthcare. When you want an honest deal in hometown service without the runaround, go to Lamont Chevrolet Chrysler in Fairfield. Let Gabe McGahey, Sheldon Bunning, Jeff Black, Dennis Downs, Matthew Rogers, or Caleb Dunn score the best deal for you on your next new or pre-owned vehicle. Parts and service departments with factory trained technicians and express lane and state-of-the-art tire and alignment technology. Lamont's always inspects your battery, antifreeze, wipers, and tires for free. We want you prepared for the open road ahead. Open 24-7 at LeMondsOnline.com. You'll like the way we do business. Get what you want and nothing else when you order a la carte internet from Wabash Communications. Wabash Communications is now able to offer a la carte internet called broadband only with fast download and upload speeds, reliable service, and unlimited data usage. No phone service is required for our broadband only plans. Our broadband only menu includes packages up to one gig download. Call us at 665-3311 now to order. Service availability and internet speed will depend on location. Contact us for details. Hi, my name is Bruce Dickey of Wabash Catch TV's Big Talk with Bruce Dickey. Watch us each weekday right here on your local cable station. We're on at 9 a.m. with a repeat at 9 p.m. It's your local TV talk show with plenty of information, fun, and frivolity to get your start day started right or maybe even ended right. Please contact me at 665-9970 or at Bruce D at Wabash.net if you are a a member of your organization would like to be a guest on the show at 665-9970. Big talk with Bruce Nicky. Hey, thanks for watching. At Wabash Communications, our goal is simple, to keep people connected. And today we are doing just that, better than ever, by delivering the latest technology and personal service only a local provider can offer. We offer services anywhere from fast, reliable internet, TV services, and home monitoring solutions to crystal clear local and long distance phone service. Wabash continues the commitment we started back in 1952, delivering a great connection to the most important people we know, our customers. So choose Wabash, the local service from people you can trust. Welcome back, folks. You're watching Big Talk with Bruce Dickey right here on Wabash Catch TV. My guest today is Dr. David Mills. He is the superintendent of Jasper Grade School, and we're talking about all kinds of different things. Okay, so you worked your way through uh, the teaching ranks. Mm -hmm. uh, what what made you leave the classroom to become an administrator other than more money, that kind of stuff? You know? uh, really, it... I gotta say, you never, you're never really, to me, the kind of guy, though, who's looking at the bottom line. I mean... Everybody does to an extent, but... I mean, as a, as a, as a school leader that's in charge of a budget, you, you, you do look at the bottom line, because you have to be that, you know, fidish, you, responsible, you know, fiduciary-wise. Sure. For me, really, what it was, um, I had some classes and was around some professors of uh, educational leadership uh, at Eastern. Uh, people like uh, uh, Professor Beverly Finley, uh, David Bartz uh, was up there, Nick Osborne uh, down around uh, uh, Mount Vernon uh, was there, Rich Berg from uh, Mattoon. Uh, when I started thinking about working on a master's degree. And uh, when I was around them taking their classes, uh, I knew at that point that's what I wanted to do. I really? wanted to become a professor of educational leadership. And, uh, you know, the, the track to doing that is, is really kind of trifold uh, when you look at it. You know, track number one, you have to have experience in the field doing that. Right. So I knew, you know, 
you're going to go into school administration. The other track uh, that is there with that, you've got to advance your degrees and 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 uh, and put yourself in a position uh, to to get a terminal de degree as a doctorate. And then the other part of it is is you need to have some sort of, some kind of research agenda uh, and something that you're providing service back to. So they're in whole probably. 2000 that's that's the commitment i made at that point was that's that's where i wanted to go and what i wanted to do and as part of this as, uh, as superintendent now that's 20 years ago 19 mm -hmm. years ago you've been in administration mm -hmm. have the needs have you seen the needs and uh um have you seen the needs change a ton over the 20 years or or is it still are you always looking for the next dollar to take care of the kids and how's that work <laughs> well when I first got into the administrative uh, administrative angle of things, there in the early two thousands, uh, the general piece of wisdom that we got uh, told and and you learned and experienced was that the state was good to put anywhere from seventy five to maybe a hundred and thirty five dollars a year on your general state aid. So you you could count on you know this is additional money per student that that's going to come in. Uh, and that's the way a lot of us worked and, and operated you and did. You, that's how you budgeted and, and went and did things. Uh, and then when uh, you know we got to uh, about 2008 and the economy you know went bust, uh, that stopped. Uh, and you know the last 10 years. Uh, really, in my perspective, and it's not just because I've lived it, this is going back and looking at trend history, you know, just there in Jasper, uh, this was probably one of the more difficult 10-year periods financially uh, for a school district to go through. Uh, one of the things that I don't think people uh, understand, uh, and, and it's through no fault of their own, school uh, finances. Uh, Pretty it, arcane. It, it's arcane. It's a fickle beast. It yeah. really is. But if you, I mean, just to put it as simple as I can, for districts that are my size and most districts that are down here like this, about 70% of your funds comes from state and federal sources. Yeah. Only 30% comes from <clears throat> your local property taxes. Right. But then people look at the local property tax piece and, well, that's where 60% of my local property yeah. taxes are going yeah. to there. So what end, you know, what's happened these last 10 years is, you know, we've watched the amount of federal and state money either be frozen or prorated, and then we've had to, you know, to, to get creative, you know, with what we do on a local level uh, to get to that. But I guess, you know, in short, what I look at is is budgeting cycles uh, over time in, in schools and in government. What I what I really think you kind of bounce between is is you bounce, you know, on the low end of it, you're in a survival budget. You're just yeah. trying to keep the doors open. Yeah. And then you get to what I call a sustainability budget, which is, you know, you're you're putting a little bit more money uh, in the till at the end of the year, you know. About you know, great. Then you get into what's called the the other end of it, the strategic uh, budgeting, where you've got where ample you, resources, and hey, we're going to put a roof on, or we're going to buy this, or we're going to we're going to go into this. And right now, we're swinging from being in that, that survival mode. To, I think we're moving closer to sustainability. Well, that's good. That's mm -hmm. good. What do you see as the future of it? I mean, the the, re, the re, what I'm bringing this up for is because it. Every time I talk to an administrator right now, there's a dearth of teachers. Yep. And it, and it seems to me that that has to be part and parcel of the budgeting issues because you can't fund a, a teacher to a, to a good enough wage where folks want to get in to the profession. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And how do, and how can we fix that? What are, I know. What are other ways to go about solving? You that? know what what I look at and and it, and it's just from a, a Jasper perspective. Uh, one of the things that I, I really credit our board of education uh, for. Uh, and I credit our faculty, staff, and our community out there with is um, we have really maintained a family-centered kind of environment uh, out there at, at Jasper. And I think the esprit de corps, uh, you know, amongst the faculty, staff, uh, even with the troubling times that we've been through, have remained fairly high. So what I look at from a Jasper perspective, we've been in a position that over time we've been able to retain quality teachers and quality staff members and at the same time when we are looking to bring people in to fill vacancies that come about because of retirement you yeah, know because sure. people yeah. you know leave yeah. we're able to get people that are coming in to coming back to our school that are 
either graduates of the school or they're from the community and they're making the choice that they're going to be there you know for the long term so what i look at is is for you know for a place like jasper yeah the funding piece of it has been tough and we've worked through and done that but i think at the end of the day even when you have those tough times uh as a school district going through and you're trying to reconcile the budget and make it to the other uh other end of things i think that when you can sit back and you can try and treat your employees faculty and staff you know appropriately and you know we're in this together i think they coalesce and they stick with you and that's not that that's something that i don't think has changed over time what's the uh, i know now you're you've had success at jasper being able to build mm-hmm. the esprit de corps uh, as you're talking about and a, and basically a culture mm-hmm. is it how, how do you go about how does somebody getting into the administration say if, if what would advice would you give a younger person uh, getting into the administration well, and you're still a oh, person. Yeah. don't get me wrong but if uh, a, to a younger person who's thinking about getting into uh, administration to build a culture because you kind of need that yeah i and i'm not going to throw any school district that i've been at under the bus or, or any other at, at any other administrators i've worked with so i'm not going to use names i'm not going to use locations but you know the, the example i will give uh at, at a place i was at previously uh when i was kind of getting used to the building and the school where we were at i was getting a tour you know well not getting a tour we were going through and checking some things out and uh i had uh, and i still got them here with me I've, it looks like the janitor's yeah, keys you yeah. know I, I carry these and do this and uh, i had a you know my supervisor look at me and go you got to get rid of that immediately and i go well, what do you mean he goes we're administrators we don't we don't carry keys we don't clean toilets we don't push brooms uh, we don't answer phones. You know, they're, they're, we hire people to do that. And, uh, you know, I didn't cause a fuss or anything like that, you know, with the individual at the time. But, but in my mind, I was sitting here thinking, we're not at 1600 Pennsylvania uh, in Washington, D.C. This isn't the White House. No. Uh, we're out here in rural and remote southern Illinois, and when there's something that needs to be done, you pitch in and you help. And what I would tell you know new people that are coming into the system is is it's important for you to really look and hone your skills on being a servant leader. Yeah. You know, and and that's you know because I've had people you know ask, well, what's the right mix? Mix what have you done out there at Jasper? And you know what I've looked at is is I get paid by the board to to kind of to to sit down and look at the data and let's make some data data-driven decisions based upon student assessment. Let's make data-driven decisions based upon the budget. Uh, and basically those things, you know, kind of set the compass for this is the direction we need to go, what we need to look at curriculum-wise, maybe some innovative things we need to do. But the other important part of it that happens, you know, when you do that is, is it's my job to make for certain teachers get the resources they need to accomplish those things and that they know they have the support to experiment and go out and do what gets done. But then the big thing is, I've got to step back and let them do let them do it. What That's they've exactly. got to do, and uh, you know that that to me is being a servant leader is knowing when to pull back. There you go. Uh, talking here with Dr. David Mills, uh, we're going to talk about. Uh, actually, we've got spelling bee coming up uh, this week, and we're going to talk a little bit about that as well as I, I want you. You mentioned servant leaders, and you mentioned Woody Hayes. I'm yep. assuming that uh, he's one of your big. Uh, uh, oh yeah, we'll, we'll the, talk about the, pay yeah, forward. We'll talk about yeah, we'll talk about that and uh, all kinds of other things. <laughs> Watching Big Talk with Bruce Dickey right here on Wabash Catch TV. And we'll be back right after these. Do stick around. At Wabash Communications, our goal is simple, to keep people connected. And today we are doing just that, better than ever, by delivering the latest technology and personal service only a local provider can offer. We offer services anywhere from fast, reliable internet, TV services, and home monitoring solutions to crystal clear local and long distance phone service. Wabash continues the commitment we started back in 1952, delivering a great connection to the most important people we know, our customers. So choose Wabash, the local service from people you can trust. Welcome to Clay County Hospital. Clay County Hospital and Clinics offer the best in services and care in the area with a staff that strives to provide the very best in patient-centered care. We offer full hospital services including radiology, therapy, surgery, labs, and emergency services. Our clinics located in Flora, Louisville, and Clay City allow us to reach out to Clay County residents so that you never have to go far from home for your health care needs. In addition to our regular provider staff, we also offer affiliated specialty provider services at our Flora Clinic. 
Finally, have a minor injury or illness, but don't want to wait for an appointment? Our walk-in, no appointment clinic hours in Flora are Monday through Thursday, 11 a.m. until 8 p.m., and Saturday from 8 a.m. until noon. Make Clay County Hospital your number one choice for health care, convenient and close to home. Clay County Hospital, your number one choice in health care. Hi, my name is Bruce Dickey of Wabash Catch TV's Big Talk with Bruce Dickey. Watch us each weekday right here on your local cable station. We're on at 9 a.m. with a repeat at 9 p.m. It's your local TV talk show with plenty of information, fun, and frivolity to get your start day started right or maybe even ended right. Please contact me at 665-9970 or at bruced at wabash.net if you are a member member of your organization would like to be a guest on the show at 665-9970. Big Talk with Bruce Dickey. Hey, thanks for watching. When you build with Morton Buildings, you build something that lasts. And now you can build for less during building value days. If you're dreaming of a personal storage building, horse barn, farm storage, home, office, insulated workshop, or even a commercial facility, take advantage of our discounted pricing on new buildings now through February 28, 2019. So don't delay. Visit MortonBuildings.com for more information. Your call is very important to us. Please hold. Your call will be answered in the order it was received. Tired of paying a big faceless company for your local telephone service in Flora? Now you can easily switch your 662 telephone number to Wabash Communications in Flora. That's right, Wabash can now provide local phone service to the Flora area, and yes, you can keep your 662 telephone number. It's available to both business and residential customers. Call us today at 662-3636. Wabash, your local telecommunications provider. When you want an honest deal in hometown service without the runaround, go to Lamont, Chevrolet, Chrysler, and Fairfield. Let Gabe McGahey, Sheldon Bunning, Jeff Black, Dennis Downs, Matthew Rogers, or Caleb Dunn score the best deal for you on your next new or pre-owned vehicle. Parts and service departments with factory trained technicians and express lane and state-of-the-art tire and alignment technology. Lamont's always inspects your battery, antifreeze, wipers, and tires for free. We want you prepared for the open road ahead. Open 24-7 at LeMondsOnline.com. You'll like the way we do business. Morning, folks. Welcome back to a Big Talk with Bruce Dickey. I'm Bruce Dickey. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And my guest is uh, Dave Mills, Dr. David Mills. Good morning. From Jasper School and uh, Jasper Great School. We're talking about all kinds of things. And we I've kind of hopped around it because... Uh, well, I, I'm an Illinois fan, so I'm you know, <laughs> Ohio State holds no dear uh, dear place in my heart. However, I've got no problem, actually not much of a problem with Ohio State because Illinois football has played well. Yes, they have. Ohio State. I have watched Ohio State either outright lose Big Ten championships or there was a, uh, have to split a Big Ten championship because of games up there at the Memorial. After after Woody Hayes left. The uh, coaching staff at uh, Ohio State for like the next 25 years had an even record yep. against Illinois. Mm -hmm. And that would have been Earl Bruce and then John Cooper and I uh, guess into even into the uh, Jim Trestle. The Trestle era. Mm -hmm. The Trestle era. Okay. Tell me one of the people that you have looked up to your entire life. Mm -hmm. uh, coming from before moving to Southern Illinois, mm -hmm. you were, lived in mm -hmm. Southern Ohio, right? Uh, well, we were up in Northeastern Ohio. Northeastern up Ohio. Oh, yeah. Up here around the uh, Steel Mill Valley, the okay. Mahoning Valley, yeah. In between Pittsburgh and Cleveland. <laughs> yep. That direction. Mm -hmm. uh, Woody Hayes has is is a foundational man in your life, isn't he? Very much so. It... Uh, <sighs> What I look at with him, it's it's not so much the well we've won this many national championships yeah, it's not football. or we've done this. He was uh, <clears throat> I consider kind of an early pioneer uh, of he wanted his football players to be really complete human beings and gentlemen coming out of the program and. Uh, 
there was a, a book that came out there in the early 2000s uh, called What It Means to Be a Buckeye, and they talked with players from different eras, and, and uh, the Woody Hayes era was was especially intriguing to me. Which was 30 years long. Oh, right? exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, you would you would look at the at the fanatics uh, of him, you know, on the sideline, you know, throwing his hats it's down and address, yelling yeah. and, you know, and doing that yeah. and, and the stuff that was in the press, but underneath that, now you had these players that volunteered these things that really never made it into the press uh, of how they were involved early with the, you know the children's hospital, how they were involved with different kinds of charities, and uh, one of the things that he would tell his players <clears throat> is that in life you never get the chance to pay back, mm-hmm. and that's what he told. He said, you know, you guys that are scholarship athletes here in football, you're never going to get the chance to pay back Ohio State, but what you can do is you can pay forward in life. And he said that you know Emerson, uh, you know the, one of the great uh, you know people you know from literature, you know said you know in life you 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 pay forward, cent by cent, deed by deed, and that's what he tried to do. And you know an example. So pay it forward. See, I always thought the 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 term pay it forward came from the movie, you know the the, the movie that came out with uh, Haley Joel Osment or whatever. No, nope, that, uh, that, that and that it, came it, and that actually came from Woody. And before that, it came from, from Emerson? Emerson. Yes, from Ralph Waldo Emerson. From Ralph Waldo Emerson. Sure enough. A Naturalist for crying out loud, paying it forward. Well, the other one I look at with Woody, and 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 you know, sometimes people escape this a little bit. You know, not only was he the head football coach there at Ohio State, but all those years that he was the head football coach, and afterwards, the man was still a member of the history department. Yeah, he you know he, he taught a class, and uh, how, long, just, how long after he co- uh, finished coaching did he teach the class? That I don't know. He stopped coaching there in '78 after he clocked the Clemson player. Clocked the Clemson uh, player. <laughs> uh, I wasn't going to bring up how yeah. it ended. I wasn't going to bring up how it ended. Just, it was an ignominious completion yeah, of his career. Yeah, it was. Uh, it is what it is. So that happened in '78, and then he lived until what was '86, '87. Yeah. Uh, so I would say he was. Uh, I, I remember the latter years. I do remember watching that. I mean, I, I watched college football mm-hmm. back in those days, and 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 I remember uh, I was I would have been twelve years old, and I remember uh, watching that football game and uh, me, me with a couple of buddies, and he uh, he punched him. <laughs> that guy just punched, that guy just punched <laughs> the player. He can't do that. I tell you a couple of funny stories about him. Uh, these following two come from book, and then the other one, you know, just experience. Uh, you know, he had that ferocious temper on the sidelines, yeah. and uh, one of the things that he would do in class, I mean, do, that, do during practice to express, you know, his displeasure with stuff, he was world famous for ripping his hat. Yeah. And uh, Rex Kern, who, uh, you know, was one of the super sophomores yeah. there in 68, had graduated and come back to the university at some point there in the mid-70s and was visiting uh, with uh, Woody there in his office, and Woody goes, oh my gosh, i got to get up, i got to go to practice. And Woody opened up his desk drawer and he had a whole sleeve of hats in there and he was sitting there talking to Rex and he was taking a razor blade and cutting every other little stitch <laughs> there on the hat and Rex all of a sudden he didn't say anything to coach he's like that's how he'd rip that hat all those years he's not superhuman I was going to say ripping hats is not easy <laughs> that's great so then the other one you know with him you know, you know there's the flamboyancy and then there's the underside of it uh, and this is what Rex Kern again. There in '68, when uh, they, uh, God, I'm kind of getting choked up even talking about it. When they won the uh, national championship. Oh, this is before they had won the national championship. Um, you know, they they got the win over Michigan. Yeah. And they're gonna they're gonna go to the Rose Bowl. Right. So right. they fly back in uh, to Columbus. And uh, as they get out there, the marching band's there, and they've got these big, huge horseshoes made of, of roses. Right. And before the team gets off, Woody grabs the captains. He goes, you guys aren't going anywhere. You go say hi to people, you're going to get back to the dorms late. because I want every one of those rose hoops. And you get them and you put them in the trunk of my car. So they went and got them, and the guys are thinking, what's going on? Woody takes the captains. And like I said, they've traveled, they've done all this. Takes the captains to Riverside Memorial Hospital. And they go up to the front desk clerk there, and Woody says, I want the names and room numbers, every person in this hospital that didn't get a visitor this weekend. And they went room to room to room. And this is one of those things that it you didn't this bring the This is the, the video. night they get back. This is from the Michigan. night they get back from wow. Michigan. 
and and that's the thing that I, I guess you know for me that that I've always kind of to, to, to try and drive and, and do the and during the time that I coached the many times that I've been involved with scouts it's those little things under the current that buy you points in the game that give you credibility yeah and uh, you know that was big air but you know as far as you know the closest that I can you know give uh, you know a woody story you know would come from my dad uh, their next door neighbors there in uh, Warren were the Trickets, and uh, one of the Trickets girls ended up marrying Randy Gratishire. Who Randy played. Randy Gratishire played for the Broncos, played for Ohio State yeah. as well. Whenever they came, he was to on the Broncos when they uh, when they when they went to Super Bowl twelve, got beat by. He was played teammates with Tom Jackson mm-hmm. uh, with the Broncos. When Woody came to recruit him, uh, and and Dad's told the story before. They had to shut down Market Street there in Warren. I mean, it was like a ticker tape parade. It's like the president showed up. Yeah. You know, he had a police detail and, and went, then went through. And, you know, and that's what I look at. You look at people like Woody Hayes, Jim Tressel, and Urban Meyer. Those guys just at an instant could go, uh, I'm going to run for senator of Ohio. And they'd win. They're, they didn't they're, hurt me, they're, I mean, there's just there's no question about it. That's how that's how revered they are. Out it there. wouldn't happen for Earl Bruce, though, would it? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I, I think Earl and the university, uh, along with Arch Schleister, kind of had an agreement. You go that way, and yeah. We're going to go that way, and we're not going to talk. Art was was okay. Now did uh, now, now I'm going to ask you. Uh, Art came in as a freshman in '80. Had he been recruited at all by Woody, or, or was that I don't know? Because because uh, Art came in would have been second year of Earl mm-hmm. Bruce, and he was of course he was outstanding freshman quarterback. I mean, well, I mean you know if you look at look at Art Schleister and the numbers he put up as a freshman, you know that didn't repeat itself again until we get close to like to Michael Michael Fryer. Fick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. Well, you they're, know, they're at Ohio State. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a pretty big stretch of time. That's a pretty good long stretch. And then, you know, this year, of course, you had uh, uh, Haskins, you know. As yeah. A, Is it, no, he's no, coming he's back, soft, right? Yeah, no, no. He's golfed in. Did he NFL. say he's going? He was, yep. he was a redshirt so- mm-hmm. sophomore. But uh, that uh, quarterback from Georgia. Fields. That Fields went into the portal, and uh, I think they've cleared him to go to Ohio State. Is That's he going to play this, get to play this year? I think he's going to get to play. The, I think they're still getting that to determine, but uh, what that ended up causing is is uh, Tate Martell from Texas that had come to Ohio State. He entered the portal. He's going down to uh, – Miami college football is just changing all over. I know you're that's I was what I was wanting to show your uh, your thing there. My little button for pay forward there. Pay it forward. You wear that all the time, don't you? Oh, I try to. Try to. That's pretty cool. Uh, talking here with Dr. David Mills, we've got all kinds of things still still to go for. I don't know what we're going to talk about, but uh, we're going to talk about the uh, spelling bee coming up as well as scouting and, and your son's involvement in yeah. scouting. He's doing very well. well Is thank he an Eagle you. Scout yet? Ah, uh, he had his border review two weeks ago. Oh, and, we'll uh, get into that. We'll let's, get into let's that. Let's keep it. Let's keep it because <laughs> I can tell you're a proud papa. Oh yeah. Uh, you're watching Big Talk with Bruce Dickey right here on Wabash. Catch TV and Dave and I'll be back right after these. When you want an honest deal and hometown service without the runaround, go to Lamont Chevrolet Chrysler in Fairfield. Let Gabe McGahey, Sheldon Bunning, Jeff Black, Dennis Downs, Matthew Rogers, or Caleb Dunn score the best deal for you on your next new or pre owned vehicle. Parts and service departments with factory trained technicians and express lane and state of the art tire and alignment technology. Lamont's always inspects your battery, antifreeze, wipers, and tires for free. We want you prepared for the open road ahead. Open 24-7 at LeMondsOnline.com. You'll like the way we do business. Get what you want and nothing else when you order a la carte internet from Wabash Communications. Wabash Communications is now able to offer a la carte internet called broadband only with fast download and upload speeds, reliable service, and unlimited data usage. No phone service is required for our broadband only plans. Our broadband only menu includes packages up to one gig download. Call us at 665-3311 now to order. Service availability and internet speed will depend on location. Contact us for details. Welcome to Clay County Hospital. Clay County Hospital and Clinics offer the best in services and care in the area with a staff that strives to provide the very best in patient-centered care. We offer full hospital services including radiology, therapy, surgery, labs, and emergency services. Our clinics located in Flora, Louisville, and Clay City allow us to reach out to Clay County residents so that you never have to go far from home for your health care needs. 
In addition to our regular provider staff, we also offer affiliated specialty provider services at our Flora Clinic. Finally, have a minor injury or illness, but don't want to wait for an appointment? Our walk-in, no appointment clinic hours in Flora are Monday through Thursday, 11 a.m. until 8 p.m., and Saturday from 8 a.m. until noon. Make Clay County Hospital your number one choice for health care, convenient and close to home. Clay County Hospital, your number one choice in health care. At Wabash Communications, our goal is simple, to keep people connected. And today we are doing just that, better than ever, by delivering the latest technology and personal service only a local provider can offer. We offer services anywhere from fast, reliable internet, TV services, and home monitoring solutions to crystal clear local and long distance phone service. Wabash continues the commitment we started back in 1952, delivering a great connection to the most important people we know, our customers. So choose Wabash, the local service from people you can trust. Hi, my name is Bruce Dickey of Wabash Catch TV's Big Talk with Bruce Dickey. Watch us each weekday right here on your local cable station. We're on at 9 a.m. with a repeat at 9 p.m. It's your local TV talk show with plenty of information, fun, and frivolity to get your start day started right or maybe even ended right. Please contact me at 665-9970 or at Bruce D at Wabash.net if you are a member of your organization would like to be a guest on the show at 665-9970. Big talk with Bruce Dickey. Hey, thanks for watching. When you build with Morton Buildings, you build something that lasts. And now you can build for less during building value days. If you're dreaming of a personal storage building, horse barn, farm storage, home, office, insulated workshop, or even a commercial facility, take advantage of our discounted pricing on new buildings now through February 28, 2019. So don't delay. Visit MortonBuildings.com for more information. Morning, folks. Welcome back. Big Talk with Bruce Dickey right here on Wabash Catch TV. My guest today is Dr. David Mills, Jasper Grade School. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> we're talking about all kinds of different things. Since about the last, well, I guess it goes back to uh, Kathy Land and before her, Jasper Grade School has kind of always helped put together the Wayne County Spelling Bee, haven't they? Yeah, what had happened uh, is uh, for the longest uh, while, and I think probably 40, maybe a 50 year stretch, the regional offices of education. Kermit Braddock and yep, that crew. They were the ones that put on your the Wayne County Spelling Bee. And uh, what happened about five years ago, uh, there was a real big push on behalf of the uh, Illinois General Assembly and, and I think somewhat by the Illinois State Board of Education. They wanted to eliminate regional offices of education. And in fact, they went as far, they didn't fund them for a while. And uh, what ended up happening is, is the ROEs uh, kind of cut back on the service. And one of the things they let go of was, you know, we just, we're not going to coordinate it. And uh, Kathy Land, uh, there at Jasper, uh, you know, her husband was there at uh, WFIW at the Dave, time, yeah. Dave Land. Uh, we talked about it, and we decided, you know, we're going to, to go ahead and we're going to keep the, the Wayne County Spelling Bee alive. Well, the other interesting thing is, <clears throat> and these are things that kind of uh, fall together about the same timeline, it used to be that if you won your county spelling bee, that's how you went on. That's how you got to Evansville. That's how you got to Evansville. Well, then they changed. And in Evansville, you'd go to Washington. Mm -hmm. Then they changed the rules on that. And now, as long as you win your school spelling bee, you can go participate in the tri tri state spelling bee. But there's a spelling. There's a a written test first now. Right? Yeah, there's a written test first. They've added a layer at mm -hmm. Evansville. Exactly. So what we've looked at is is now what what we've done for the last five years is uh it's purely a wayne county bragging rights yeah spelling bee and uh you know on our side yeah there's some logistics we've got to book a venue we've got to get a pronouncer and officials and uh you know we've got to get the word lists and and get the information back and forth but what i look at is is this is one of those things that uh 
you know, this is a big deal for our community. These kids get to come out and participate and do it. We've been good. We've had a partner the last couple of years with uh, uh, 90.9 uh, 90. The Vine right. and Randy Olson. This year they're going to actually uh, live stream it right. on uh, areasports.net. So, you know, it, it's a good thing for those kids academically to, well, to be seen. That's my question. Do the kids look at it as, I mean, I, I've seen the kids there. They they get nervous. Oh, yeah. The, the kids look at it as, it's a competition. <laughs> it is. Are the kids uh, the kids are fine with it? I guess right. They are. You know, it's it, it's interesting. Uh, there's uh, the kids at, cry. Exactly. Once in a while, a kid will cry. <laughs> Is uh, there's there's being that uh, uh, junior high school, middle age school kid that I get to meet when they come in. I meet the parents and then I take them over into the, the foyer and we do the lottery and, and they're laughing and giggle. But what's uh, interesting is, is man, as soon as we walk through the threshold of the chamber, you know, into the, into city council chambers in there, boy, you can just see the stage presence. <laughs> <laughs> it, just, it comes over. It's, it's heavy lifting time. It is. A, it's a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. And, and, I, and it, it does kids good in the long run. I think. Oh yeah. It's, I mean, it's a good experience. It, uh, Everyone needs a little trial by fire from time to time. Oh, exactly. It uh, well, and that's uh, that's one of the things that uh, my son, you know, he he's asked me before, you know, what are some hard things you've had to go through, you know, in life, you know, that have helped you, you know, kind of your son asked you this. Things. Oh yeah, and I've told him, you know, for me, the, the two most physically mentally and emotionally challenging things that i've been through in my life were scouting related one was becoming a firecrafter and the other one was uh, climbing a mountain the first time uh, when i went to philmont uh and then third on the list would be going through my eagle scout board of review and those are all things that got bookended in there between about age 13 and age 16 yeah and any situations that i'm in now i go i revert back to hey you got through this this too shall pass you you can rise and you can do it well, that's that's mm-hmm. well you know that's the thing that folks need to remember the this too shall pass yep uh, that's a well, that, that's good advice um all right now tell me about scouting is it is is there still an active scouting group in wayne county or where do you have to um go? actually uh in in wayne county illinois right now uh they have resurrected uh, tr- uh, PAC 173, uh, Troop 173, uh, and they meet out at the CP Church. Uh, and uh, David Kosmatka, the uh, music teacher at uh, Center Street, mm-hmm. is the one that heads it up. And then Wayne City has their own troop now, and uh, that is uh, Carol McKinney oh, really? uh, that, that does that over there. And then, of course, here in Flora, uh, we've got Troop 282, and uh, that's George Dickinson. Uh, that's uh, uh, that he celebrated his 70th year in scouting last Are year. Are you kidding me? Was my scoutmaster? Yeah. So, uh, and uh, you know, the big plug that I'll put out there, and this is for moms and dads and and junior high school, you know, age children out there. We're always looking for other scouts, uh, and there's plenty of time to join this spring and and uh, get ranked up and. You can go to a real cool summer camp uh, this year. So if you're what interested, are the, get a hold uh, what, of us. What are the t- what's the typical age of a Boy Scout? Uh, typical age of a Boy Scout is uh, or 11, you start? Uh, age 11 uh, and on up. Uh, How long does it take to be an Eagle Scout? What's the youngest Eagle Scout? Were you an Eagle Scout? Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I Back then, were you still getting to meet congressmen or something like that yes, when you became an Eagle we, Scout? Yes, we, we did that. Um, I became an Eagle Scout. Three days before my 18th birthday, so I will come real close to to aging out. Uh, I would say the quickest that you could make it, I think on paper, it's it's a little over two years. And but we we try not to do that. Yeah. Uh, we try and stretch that out for uh, a while. Well, let the kids get a wide variety of. Well, and the big thing about being Eagle Scout when you do that, uh, it, it's not about the merit badges you've earned. It's not about uh, the you know the project necessarily that you've done or ranking up uh, and getting that point it's you've demonstrated leadership you know you can work with other people and you can do that and that's something that i look at that you know the younger you try and do that you know the harder that's going to be Uh, it sounds like it Uh, and your son is uh following in your footsteps yes i'm I'm real proud of him he'd set a goal that he wanted to to get his eagle scout done uh uh before he graduated eighth grade and uh and uh and he's on track to do that how about that yeah Uh, doc time just fires away when you're when you and i are chatting and we could talk we we could talk football the rest of the day we could do i have a whole lot of time left or we are we We out three seconds what do you want to say hey wayne county spelling bee this thursday fairfield city hall uh, doors open at 5. Contestants are there at 5.30. B starts at 6, 30, uh, at 6 o'clock. 
Six o'clock for the uh, the B to start. There you go. Uh, welcome. Uh, everybody's welcome to go see. Thanks, Doc. Appreciate Bruce, it. Bruce, thank you, buddy. We'll see you soon. All righty. That's big talk. We'll see you soon.